We've already seen how Final Gather works, also how Global Illumination works. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can combine these two powerful features so that they complement each other and help themselves render out nicer scenes and a bit faster than you would think. So let's go ahead and open up an example scene here. And the scene we're looking for is scene number 6. It's going to be number 6, GI plus FG start. So let's go ahead and open up that scene. You may get a dialogue like this that's going to ask you a question about the gamma correction settings in the scene. Basically it's asking you, would you like to adopt the, uh, the scene's gamma settings? We're going to go ahead and say yes, adopt files, gamma settings, simply because this scene right here is the same scene that we've been working on before. So it's the same exact scene where we left off on global illumination in this apartment scene earlier. Okay. If I go ahead and go to render menu, go to render setup here, and go to indirect illumination, here's my global illumination settings from before. Remember we worked on this? Also my light settings have photons and global illumination enabled, all that stuff. So what we're going to do is take this scene, and we're going to see how we can add a final gather to the global illumination in this scene. So let's go ahead and let's do that now. The first thing I'm going to do is come up here to the views menu. I'm going to hit save active perspective view so I can save out this view. Now if I go ahead and have a look I can always restore the active perspective view and come back to it later. Okay. Let me go ahead and hit H on the keyboard to open up the select from scene browser here. And if you don't already have the light filter set up, if you have your uh, window here set up like this, simply hit the display none button over here on the right and then turn on the light filter that way we can only see the lights so we have the three spotlights we created before let me go ahead and select spotlight number one I'll go to the modify panel and under the mental ray indirect illumination rollout you notice that we have our manual settings right here down in the lower right we have right now two million photons per light that's because of, of course as we've seen when using global illumination by itself you need millions and millions of photons to get a good result now when you combine global illumination and final gather you don't have to use millions of photons. In fact, you can get away with just thousands of photons or hundreds of thousands of photons, which is a significantly lower amount. So what we're going to do is reduce this from 2 million photons to only 200,000, which is going to give us a very, very small amount of photons and lots of splotching and artifacting in our, in our scene. But that's actually OK. And you'll see in a moment why that is. So let's go to all the lights. Now let's switch all of them to 200,000 photons. There we go. Okay, so now all my lights have been reduced to 200,000 photons, which comes out to a total of three lights, shooting a grand total of 600,000 photons in my scene. So I don't even have a million photons in our scene. Now let me go to the render setup window, and under in the global illumination rollout here, I'm going to make a few changes. The maximum sampling radius is right now turned off, which basically means that it's onto automatic mode, and Mental Ray is going to choose an ideal radius for my scene. Well, I don't want Mental Ray to do that, so I'm going to turn this option on to switch it to manual mode, and I'm going to choose about two units. Okay. The other option I'm going to choose is optimize for final gather, slower GI. If you remember this setting, I skipped it in a previous video a long time ago and said I'd be coming back to it later. Well, now we need this option, so I'm going to turn it on. And you're going to see what that option does. Now let's close this rollout and let's go down to the reuse rollout here. And let's create ourselves a photon map. So right now by default the photon map setting is set to off. That's not what we want. Let's go ahead and select the second option here, the read write photons option. And 3ds Max wants us to name a file here. So let's go ahead and call this, pho this photon map apartment GI. You can call it anything you want. I'll just call it Apartment GI. Okay. So now if Apartment GI is set up, let's go ahead and let's do a render here. I'm going to turn off the UI here for the render frame window. Just to take away uh, some of that clutter from my 3ds Max uh, workspace here. Okay. So the global nation actually went by pretty fast. But you notice we get lots of splotching. That's because we're only using 200,000 photons per light. Also, we're using, if we come up here, we'll notice that we're using the uh, max sampling radius at, a, at uh, 2 centimeters or 2 units. Okay, That creates this splotching all over the place. But, on the other hand, it also creates more accurate lighting. To get rid of the splotching, of course, we'd have to add more photons, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use Final Gather. So let's go ahead and collapse the Global Illumination rollout here. Let's go to Final Gather and let's turn it on. 
I'll start off with a draft preset. I'm going to go ahead and choose a point density here of 1. That way I can have a good density of final gather rays. Now for the rays per final gather point, right now it's set to 50 which is pretty low. Now normally you'd have to go to a pretty high setting, more than 200, maybe even 500 rays for a final render. Now in my case, I can go to as low as only about 128 rays. That's because I'm combining final gather with global illumination. And when you combine the two, you can use less photons for global illumination and you can use less rays for final gather. And as you can imagine, this is extremely useful and very important when you're rendering out using these two features together. Now, I'm not going to use the interpolate over number of final gather points here. Instead, what I'm going to do is come down here to the uh, point interpolation radius method and turn that on instead. Now, I'm not going to use the radii in pixel space here. So I'm going to turn that option off to use it in a world space instead. Now, I have my radius options here, which I'm going to turn on, both of them, the radius and the minimum radius. Now, to figure out the radius is actually going to be pretty easy. Let me go ahead and close this render frame window. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard to go to a top view, and I'm going to zoom in here a bit. And I'm going to go to Tools, and I'm going to use the Measure Distance tool. And I'm going to measure the room here from the top left down to the lower right. That's going to give me a pretty, pretty good number there to work with. Now, I'll go to the Max Script here and open up the Max Script Listener, which is F11 on the keyboard for short, uh, the hotkey there. Now, the distance is about 126 and change. So I'm going to say 12% or 10%, I should say, of 126 is 12.6. I'm just going to go ahead and use 12. Okay? It doesn't have to be the exact number 10% or whatnot. Now, for the minimum radius, I'll use about 10% of 12, which is going to be about 1.2. So that's going to give me a pretty good uh, interpolation solution there. Okay. Now, with that done, I'm going to go ahead and collapse that. Down here, I, will, I could go ahead and create a final gather map if I want to. At the moment, I'm not really going to. There's really no need to. You could if you want to, but I'm just going to leave it alone. I'll go back to a perspective view, and I'll go back to views, and I'll restore active perspective view to go back to this render position right here. So I have my photon map down here that I've already created, and I've set up some of these final gather settings to the way that I like them. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to render this out using Final Gather by itself without Global Illumination so you can see the difference. So let's go to Global Illumination and let's disable it so that we're only using Final Gather. Now let's go ahead and let's do a render. Let me move this over to the side like this. And you can see that the Final Gather is actually going by pretty fast. And the reason it's going by so fast is because we're only using 128 rays, which is actually a very small number. So you notice that uh, it doesn't appear like there's any indirect illumination. It's very difficult to see the bounce lighting in the scene. And it's very dark, which is uh, not exactly a good thing. Other than that, everything else looks uh, pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this image out, and I'm going to hide it for now, just so we can come back and do a compare and contrast later. Okay, now I'm going to turn on global illumination. So now I'm going to render out with both final gather and global illumination together just so we can see the difference here. So, let's go ahead and render this out. I'll move this over to the side. And there we go, it's rendering out. Alright, so you can immediately tell in the fast progressive feedback here of the render frame window, the look of the lighting looks completely different. Looks brighter, looks more natural, and materials just look a lot better than before. There's just this beautiful ambient lighting to the scene that just looks fantastic. And even though the render isn't finished, or there it goes, it's finishing up now, you can see that there's some beautiful detailed shadowing underneath the couch, something that we couldn't achieve just by using global illumination by itself. Final Gathering is able to come in and add those beautiful shadows and more accuracy and detail to the lighting in our scene. Now let me move this image over to the right, and I'll bring back the previous image that we rendered out using Final Gather by itself. So on the left we have Final Gather by itself. It looks very dark. Uh, the environment lighting doesn't look that great. Even though we do have nice shadows, we don't have that nice ambient lighting in our scene. Now the image on the right uses global luminosity.